One of the things that I see pretty regularly on my channel comments, uh, in my emails, on coaching calls, is that people who are in a relationship with a dismissive avoidant, they tend to feel very lonely. Hey, what's going on, my beautiful people? This is Certified Life and Relationship Coach, Coach Court. In today's video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to get rid of that feeling of loneliness while in a relationship with a dismissive avoidant. Thank you for sticking around. If this is your first time viewing me, a little bit of background about myself. I graduated with my sociology degree in 2006. I became certified in life and relationships in 2019, and I have been working with families and the community for over the past 20 years. Please do me a favor by subscribing to the channel, clicking that bell notification so you're notified for all the newest coaching content. In today's video, we're gonna talk about five tips on overcoming loneliness while in a relationship with a dismissive avoidant. This topic has been over, it's pretty much over, uh, it's overdue. You know, I really feel like I should have talked about this a long time ago because it's something that I felt in relationship. It's something that a lot of people that I've worked with has also felt in relationships. And these are some of the tips that I've given them on how to overcome that feeling of loneliness. And if you are with someone who is considered more avoidant than other people, you for sure will feel it at some point. You will feel like you're in this relationship alone. The text messages aren't coming back as you know, consistently as you're sending out to them. They feel no need to reach out during the day and talk about small talk and small chat. You know that they're committed to you. You know that they are only seeing you and you guys are in that, that exclusive relationship, but it just feels like there can be more that's done. So I wrote down five tips here. And the very first one is take the time to do things alone. All right. It's like the saying by Thich Nhat Hanh. You must love a person in such a way where they feel free. And I know that's going to sound really tough right now if you're in a relationship and you're not getting your needs met at all. I have that down the line too. But you need to get back to reconnecting to who you are, the things that you like. And uh, you know, nurturing those relationships that you have with your other people in your life, like your family and your friends and getting back into your hobbies. And I can almost guarantee you that you pretty much lost yourself in this relationship. You have pretty much become a shadow of this other person. You guys have done so much together and it, it's really hard to reconnect to yourself and understand who you are. Now, if this isn't applying to you, feel free to just disregard that information. But for a lot of other people, especially if you're someone who's an anxious attacher, you pretty much engulf your partner. What do you really like to do? Do you like golfing? Do you like playing Pokemon Go? Or do you like doing these other things that your partner's doing and you're simply doing it because they're doing it? Actually get excited. Get excited about being able to be your own self and take that time that they're going and doing their thing to do things for yourself. The second thing that you wanna do is communicate your bids for connection. Dr. John Gottman has a a theory that talks about you know bids for connection and bids for connection is basically anything that is uh, trying to get some type of emotional connection or even physical connection with another person it could be things like you know texting someone how's your day rubbing a person on their shoulder or even initiating intimacy those are all bids for connection and sometimes when you're in a relationship with an avoidant you may not get that from them small talk like asking how's your day going or texting kissy faces or emojis and stuff throughout the day that's something that they don't really see as important it's not like one of their needs so you want to be direct and be clear about what makes you feel loved and what makes you feel like this relationship is fulfilling so if you want more bids of connection from them you need to be direct and be clear there are a lot of little bids for connection that people don't really pick up on like even if it's something like looking at them and just smiling the third one to overcome loneliness in a relationship is to stop comparing your life to either your friends or what you see on social media. We all know that Instagram and Facebook and all those other different platforms are just a highlight in their life. It's not something that's real. But what happens is the more that you look at those things or the more that you see these experiences that other people are having, it makes you feel as if you're missing out on something. So it starts to make you feel lonely. So if these people are going on vacations, if they're just getting engaged and all those other different things, you're going to feel some type of way and getting your feelings and feel like, why isn't my spouse showing up that way? And if you're with this person and you're with them for long enough, you know what they're capable of. You know how they show up in relationships. So it really shouldn't be a big surprise to you that they're not showing up the way that people on the internet, people on social media, or even your friends, their boyfriend or girlfriends are showing up or their husband or wives. 
that's just not who they are. So you need to stop comparing yourself and accept that person for who they are. And I'm going to get down, you know, to the fifth one. It's most important one, guys. I want you to stick around for that one because I really feel people need to hear that fifth one. The fourth thing that you want to do is identify the stresses in your life. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's your friends or family. Maybe it's drama that's going on with them, and it causes you to lean even heavier on your significant other or your your romantic partner. And those expectations become unrealistic, and it's going to cause you to feel unfulfilled with your partner. So. You need to find better ways to de-stress, whether it's going to see a counselor, talking to a therapist, or, or talking to a friend that just can be a sounding board for you. Try not to make your partner that person that you have to go to so much, because after a while, you're going to start to feel like, all right, this person just doesn't want to listen, doesn't listen to me. I feel unseen and unheard. But if you think about how much you're relying on that person to be um, your confidant in everything and you may not even be realizing that you're leaning this heavy on your person so identify those major stressors and the fifth one is to leave the relationship i'm a huge advocate for mental health protecting yourself making sure that you're your best self and if being with this person is not going to help that if it's not going to contribute to that that aspirations of being your best version or, you know, on your journey, you start to feel like, all right, we're just headed in different directions. And this person is not showing any type of signs of, you know, going and seeking therapy or counseling for themselves or trying to become the best version of themselves. Then it's time to lead a relationship. I know that's something that I probably should have started with for number one. But I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt, give people the opportunity to change, to show up better. Um, and I don't like changing people. I just feel like, People naturally will change over time, either for the better or for the worse. Over time, they'll just start turning into a new person. And we all are. We all are all evolving and, you know, life is all about ebbs and flows. So if you're feeling really lonely consistently and it's been for a great amount of time, and I'd say over a year or so, even six months, then I say it's time for you to just go ahead and make that ultimate decision to just let that person go on. Uh, maybe find someone else that aligns a little bit better with them, a little bit more compatible. It's time to just do what's best for you. So if you found this video of any value, please like, comment, and share. You can follow me on my other social media accounts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, as I am Coach Court. And I want you guys to always remember, when you go be love, you'll never have to find it.